I'm Nick Hamilton here at the Harold Pump Awards for 2012. Star-studded affair. Lots of athletes and entertainers here for a great cause in cancer research. Tonight, the honorees are Dodger legend and great Sandy Koufax, the great Joe Namath, just to name a few. Dodger legend. This man needs no introduction, so I'm just going to get right into it. Well, thanks, Nick. What is, what is your take on it's the 50th anniversary of Dodger Stadium? Well, it's a, it's a cathedral of baseball. It's where so many memories have been made. Uh, so many memories linger on in the, in the hearts and souls of men and women now, or boys and girls growing up with the Kofaxes and Drysdales and Says and Garbies and Karoses and Piazzas. And through the years, it's been the, the, the one place that you could always go to and know you were going to have great entertainment and a wonderful atmosphere. And, and it typified baseball. It still does. What is your take on Clayton Kershaw? Well, at a young age, he really uh, typifies what Sandy started to do once he got into his sixth or seventh year, and Clayton's in his third year, I think. Uh, but he understands it. He realizes he's blessed. He gives back. Just had a big uh, Kershaw Challenge uh, charity event the other night at Dodger Stadium. So uh, he and Ellen uh, have set a great uh, standard now for young players. Then he goes on the field and you know, he constantly puts, uh, puts seven, eight, nine innings on the board. He's, uh, he's a true Cy Young Award winner. Well, thank you so much. I am honored to be in the presence of Mr. Steve Garvey, Dodger legend. Thank you so much. Thanks. Call me Steve. <laughs> Obviously, you left the Dodgers in good hands with, with Don Manning, who's the manager now. How well do you think the Dodgers will be in his hands, and where do you see him going as far as being a manager under your tutelage, obviously? Well, yeah, you know, we were together for a while, and uh, yeah, the thing about Donnie, uh, you know, the thing that always comes to mind for me, he was a superstar that never acted like one. Uh, so he, he was all ears. Uh, it wasn't that he knew everything or didn't need to learn anything. Uh, he, was, he worked at it. And Donnie will do very well. Uh, and I'm just, uh, I, you know, everybody talks about this year because they're, you know, close to being in first place. But what he did last year in the second half of the season with all the, you know, distractions that were going on, uh, I think speaks volumes for what, not only what kind of a manager he is, but what kind of an individual he is. Now, how's life for you now? You run, you're pretty much running baseball, you're oh. in the top front office, so how's life going for you? That's a lot of responsibility. I get yelled at by the commissioner on a number of occasions. It's, it's fun. What is your take on Matt Kemp and where he is and where do you see him, how far do you see him going? Yeah, the first time I saw Matt Kemp play, I think I was, I was playing for the, I think it was the Mets or the Diamondbacks against him, and I was, I was really impressed. The first time I saw him swing a bat, I said, wow, this guy's going to be good. And, you know, it, it took a few years, I think, to, to have the right balance, um, it, you know, as far as his manager went and, and getting that opportunity to, to show what he can do. And, and now he's, you know, he's as talented as anyone in the game. And, you know, you can't find a guy with, with better tools who's ever played the game than a guy like Matt Kent. just want to get your take on a pitcher like Clayton Kershaw and what that means to the game. Well, Clayton's great. You know, he's got a great future. He's got a great present. And he's a really good person. So... Yeah, I'm happy for any success, and I consider him a friend. Last question. You were honored with the bobblehead the other night at Dodger Stadium. Well, that wasn't necessarily an honor. It's in the back of it. Or on a, well, on a dashboard somewhere. Well, for, for us Dodger fans, uh, that, that is an honor. What did that mean to you to be honored by so many fans, old and young, that know who you are? Well, it, you know, it's very nice to be remembered. Uh, but, you know, somehow or other... It was nice, you know, the bobblehead that people wanted. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you so much, sir. I'm Nick Hamilton here with the legendary Dave Winfield. So what makes the Harold Pump so significant and these awards so significant to you? Well, let's just say, you know, they're raising money for cancer research, and they've helped a lot of people in this area. I, don't, I can't remember what year this is, but they've had so many celebrities and icons that come out and support them. It's about, they'll tell you, it's about the relationships. And they have so many relationships that bring people together. There aren't many uh, events that, you know, that they have to rival this. I'm going to bring Sandy out on the stage. And we're going to have fun. That's what we do. This 2012 year seems to be a really, really kind of wacky year, ups and downs. In your estimation, what is this year to you so far? And who are the biggest winners and losers at the trade deadline? No, you know, that, it's funny because uh, I can't tell you what the most significant was, but one was but you know uh it was a it was groundbreaking or earth shattering when when albert Pujols came out here to uh the california angels i mean excuse me the los angeles angels and um 
he's going to continue to make a difference for years to come. But uh, there have been so many trades, teams that you thought were going to be up. Philadelphia was up. They're down. You, you know, just a lot of people. So Yankees, are you expect them to be good, and they are. So Boston on the bottom all the time. So anyway, we can go on and on. But baseball always has some good races shaping up. And uh, come playoff time, I'll be watching. How in the world did you ever dissect that Colts defense? Study, 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 you know, repetition, first rule of learning. They were so good, they couldn't change anything. You know what I'm saying? Throughout the season, they annihilated everyone. Why would they change their defense for us? Now, if you can anticipate what they're going to do, you might know what they can't do. How much confidence did it take for you to guarantee a win in the Super Bowl? You know, I, our team was basically tired of being told we couldn't measure up or wouldn't measure up. We had beaten the Oakland Raiders, the Kansas City Chiefs. We had beaten some good teams. We were a confident team. You look at the one-eyed monster, the camera, it doesn't lie. You can see how you were playing, not making errors, not making mistakes, not beating ourselves, you see. So we were confident and just... Uh, it just took a little bit of egging on to come out with that statement, you see. Last question. You still have the white, the famous white coat? I do have that set to Silver Fox, yeah. The Minx I kind of split up with uh, when the family started and uh, donated them to a couple of good causes. But living in Florida, I don't have a call to wear it very often. I got to tell you, so I'm a sports nut. That's all I do. I watch, I watch sports from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed. So, you know, you know, when actors, when we see each other, we don't care because we know each other, you know. But there are a lot of athletes that, uh, I mean, I grew up as an athlete myself. I was a baseball player. And so anytime I see those cats, I get excited. And I saw Kareem Abdul-Jabbar when I walked in. I was like, man, I mean, that's legend there, you know what I mean? New film projects that are coming, uh, coming out. We haven't seen you on the screen for a while. Yeah, I've been making them. And they're not out yet. They're coming out. I got one that's going to the Toronto Film Festival called Jane Mansfield's Car with myself and Robert Duvall and uh, John Hurt and Kevin Bacon and uh, did a movie called Baytown Disco with Ava Longoria and uh, let's see what else. I got one called The Red Machine with me and Thomas Jane and Piper Parabo. They're all in the can waiting to come out. Well, you know, any, any event that supports cancer is something that I want to lend my support to because I'm a cancer survivor and uh, I, I, I want to be part of uh, the effort to, to cure cancer. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm selfish in that, but uh, it's a great thing, and I'm, I'm glad I'm part of it. Lakers uh, did a great job uh, improving the team by the addition of Dwight Howard and Steve Nash. I think it, uh, those, those additions will make them contenders and give them a, a, a great opportunity to do well in the postseason. I'm not making any predictions, but uh, I think the fans are going to have a great time watching the team and enjoy what they see. Well, you know, the, you, no two players are alike, and uh, Howard might really just fit the, the Lakers' needs better than Andrew Bynum did. The latest trade between Dwight Howard and Andrew Bynum, how much will it shake up the NBA this coming season? Well, it's always a good thing, whether people admit it or not, when the major markets are legitimate. And uh, you see two teams in New York doing it with the Nets and the Knicks. You see two teams in L.A. doing it with the Clippers and the Lakers. You know, Kobe Bryant with five championships has an opportunity to put himself in a position to get another one, yet the Lakers seem to get the dominant center of that era every time there's a new decade, and uh, this decade is no different. So it's going to be great theater, but OKC is still going to have something to say about it. I'm here with TNT's own Kenny the Jeff Smith. So what brings you out to this great occasion, which I love you what? Well, my wife and I, we've been coming here for the last four or five years. Uh, they do a great job, you know, raising a lot of money for the hospital. And, you know, one thing we could do is give our time. And so we're here doing that. How much fun do you have on the set with Charles, Ernie, and Shaq? How much fun is that behind the scenes for those of us that really don't get a chance to see the commercial breaks and things like that? I mean, this is this is three guys sitting on the couch. I'm an answer. Go ahead. Go ahead. Non nonstop. Nonstop fun. <laughs> That's what it is. She knows. Yeah. Oh I get to see God. behind the scenes as well as in front, so it continues. <laughs> it, it, all day. I mean, what you see in front of the camera is just a continuation of what we do behind the exactly. scenes. What does it mean to be honored by such a prestigious foundation as the Harold Pump Foundation? Well, I think it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing. It's not something you ever take for granted. 
particularly pleased to have the co-honorees uh, be Joe Namath and Sandy Koufax. Uh, two pretty good guys who have uh, maintained their image at the line of scrimmage for a long time. So I I'm happy to be in the mix tonight. I'm looking forward to addressing this audience, trying to say something relevant, sharing a little bit of my story, and uh, accepting the tribute with dignity. Well, I think this is a huge step for Dwight. Uh, I think he's following in the footsteps of some giants and Shaquille and Kareem and even Bynum who just reached all-star status so LA is used to having success they're used to having their big men you know be the main factor and uh, now they're back to that